We are Steve and Jill. Together, we've been buying and reselling land since the 90s. Our data-centric approach leaves our buyers asking, how can you sell it so cheap? Here on the Land Academy Show, we answer that and more. Steve and Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from the Valley of the Sun. Today's Jack Thursday. <laughs> and this episode is called Numbers. Uh-huh. And I'm going to surprise, surprise, share my thoughts on why everything starts and ends with numbers in business. I understand. Hey, before we do that, can we do our fun thing? Sure. Okay, okay. So we mentioned yesterday we were talking about um, from the question... Nice. We're the nicest people. Aaron in the wrote, hold please. So yeah, Aaron wrote, uh, and we were we launched into this question about, you know, like it was picking an address and picking an area code for you to have as your home base for your mailer, right? In your company. So we were thinking, we, one of my ideas was, what if you just research and pick where the nicest people are in the country? And you use that as your place to uh, have your phone number and everything tied to, because everybody knows that you're so nice. What's funny is, I guess two of the top three. I'm pretty proud of myself. So do you want to yeah, share? Yeah, you did. Well, this comes from a survey. This is 2022, uh, where Big Seven Travel, we have no affiliation in any way, right. uh, asked 1.5 million of their social media followers to vote mm -hmm. by state. Where are the friendliest, nicest people? Mm -hmm. And the results are? Let's do the top three. Number one, this one I didn't guess, Minnesota. That's number one. I love it. I can tell you with personal experience, there are a lot of people from Minnesota that are snowbirds here in Phoenix right now. Yeah. They are the nicest people. Yeah. Number two and number three, I guessed. I got Tennessee. And I was thinking there's probably someone we don't even hear about, like South Carolina. By golly, they're number three. Here's what's funnier. Keep going down the list. Do you know what the meanest are? Oh, you want to keep going? Oh, there's meanest. You were, did, oh, I wrote it. Oh, wait, I did. I did it. I did. I worked ahead on my project. I'm going to reel, <laughs> reel down the list. <laughs> Can you do the nicest and then I'm going to add my number four is Texas. Number five, uh, Wyoming. Number six, Indiana. A little bit of surprise there. Number yeah. seven, Colorado. No surprise. Number eight, Kansas. Number nine, Oklahoma. No surprises here at all. Number 10, Hawaii, which was very surprising. Mm -hmm. Now, let me add my research because this is funnier. This is what it said is are the meanest people in the country. Number one is New Mexico. What? Really? I know. That's strange. I know. And number two is Arkansas. Okay, then wait. That's not right. That's what this said. I'm not kidding. And it said even like New Mexico, even though they may have friendly names of their towns, are not that nice. And then this is even better. I, I wrote down the happiest and the unhappiest. This is a different study. They used 31 metrics. It was like a medical group, like a hospital that did this one on the happiest and the unhappiest. And they used 31 metrics, including unemployment and suicide rates. Not kidding. Jeez. I know. It's kind of scary. So the happiest state in the country is, do you know? I have cheated. I looked at it, so I okay. do Okay. Utah. Yeah, I'm surprised that Utah didn't come up on this list. Uh, I the, know. Of the friendliest. And then the unhappiest states were West Virginia and Arkansas. I just thought that was interesting. That's, I, I really I question. Know. This is so opinion subjective. True. This is all of the study, but yeah. But the back to the point was you could so Minnesota, Tennessee, South Carolina. We were kind of half joking, but it's but people see them as the nicest people in the country. So maybe that's where you want to have your mail. I don't know. I happen to do have a Tennessee. You know, it's funny because we have tested this. You know, like that's part of why you're here because we're going to fail and tell you if you need to do that or not. <laughs> So I do have a Tennessee address and phone number that we keep going just to, just because I started it. And I also have a Northern California one, which I don't really use very much, but we still have. Before we get into this show today, let's take a question mm -hmm. posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. And don't forset, uh, forget to subscribe to the Land Academy YouTube channel. Comment on the shows you like. Uh, Aaron wrote, I just thought this would be cool to share. It's not my deal. I wish one day we'll see. Uh, Jerry N has been in the game for quite a long time, and this deal reflects a bit of that experience. This is what I call a BRRR, and is another great real estate strategy. All right, well, so listen to this there deal. There we go. I okay. put this uh, in my. I was jack trying to stall. Thank you. <laughs> I put this in uh, in the Jack Thursday for a reason. Okay. Because this person submitted this 
uh, it's a buddy of theirs or a f- friend of theirs that's doing this deal. Okay. You're going to love this deal, Jill. So Luke wrote It's this. B-R-R-R. Okay, got it. Buy rehab. So purchase for $1.8 million, a million dollar rehab. You have total cost in at $2.8 million. This is a house. Mm-hmm. Refinance for $4.5 million, which is appraised value. On terms of 80% loan to value, 3, 3.75 fixed rate on a 30-year f- uh, fixed mortgage. So $3.6 million loan. Take $800,000 cash out, $3.6 million loan, $2.8 million cost. And now you've got, you're left with $16,000 pre-tax, uh, principal interest taxes and insurance, PITI. A month. A month. You rent the property for 12 months on a $25,000 a month lease with an option to renew for another 12 months for $30,000. Five reasons why this works. You you put $800,000 cash in your pocket. It's not a taxable event, which is subject to, however, we're going to leave that out of this for a second. You have $900,000 of equity that will continue to go up as the market appreciates. An an extraordinary depreciation write-off. Mm-hmm. Uh, opportunity, 80, 80 to $90,000 a month, uh, a year, and fantastic cash flow, $100,000 uh, a, m- a year to, and it'll go to 170000 in year two. Mm-hmm. So the name of this episode is numbers. If that makes your head spin, does that make your head spin? Nope. I know it doesn't. Nope. You're the right girl for me, Joe. Nope. No, no, I love this stuff. You can do one, you can do 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, all you need to now do. Now you got the, you got the, um, you have the recipe, just do it again. So there's a lot of discussion after, and this is in Discord, I pull mm-hmm. it out of Discord. And I, my immediate response was, we, we're involved in a deal like this, mm-hmm. Jill and I are right now, and we're working on the second one. And the reason that these work is because we're very close to a, a international teaching hospital where there's surgeons coming in and out and they need house, expensive housing like this. Mm-hmm. And so it works. It works in those types of markets. There's tons of teaching hospitals all over this country where this can work. Oh, it's because you're talking about doctors like that tenant, pay that as rent. As a tenant. That's true. You know, and doctors it's all are, over. they're not going to ask any questions. Yeah. That's right. It's all, it's all over. over. You, don't, you don't realize it. You don't realize it until you look around and do the math. You know, that's a great, that's a great example of when you talk about, um, in 3.0, which is being released right now. (laughs) (laughs) What was that? It's like devil woman came out. I had to get that in there. (laughs) Land Academy 3.0 is here. So it's awesome. This is stuff we talk about in 3.0, where we teach you how to troll for these areas and find these numbers. So you want, if you want to do numbers like this, you can use Jack's example to put in the parameters zero in and just kind of scroll around the country and see where rents are being, you know, command that price. And, and the houses, you know, align with those figures. Today's Jack Thursday. And this episode is called numbers. Everything starts with numbers. You should be chasing numbers. And I really mean that from my soul. This person, whoever uh, did this real estate deal we just talked about in the question, Mm -hmm. they had a budget. They set out to find a piece of real estate that was grossly undervalued and needed to be completely renovated to the tune of a million dollars. And with intent, sought out the markets where he knew he could, that rent would support, uh, you know, a 20 to $30,000 a month rent, which is not unusual, especially in California and and, uh, again, the higher end neighborhoods that are close to hospitals. But that didn't happen because he was looking around, seeing what's available. This really, really, is a mental thing. And we are taught to look around. We're taught to walk through Walmart and look around and see what's available and choose the best one. Throughout our whole entire lives, that's what we're taught to do. This is brilliant. Well, I don't agree with that. I think you should create your own market and see what you create what's available, not what's on the Walmart shelf, not what's on listed on the MLS, not what's on the car lot, and certainly not uh, when you're choosing a life partner or a business partner. You, you can create that by chasing numbers. So you start with a budget. You should spend hours and hours and hours budgeting and rebudgeting and supporting the numbers that you come up with to see if it's realistic and then seeing if there's a need like in the form of a, f- a feasibility study before you ever spend a dollar. Yeah, no, you're right. It makes I, you think of, yeah, how many people walk around, even like right now on like um, Alibaba, you know, I'm sure there's people that are trolling Alibaba for some kind of product they can buy in bulk 
And it's like, if I only mark this up a dollar, this is what I could make. But like, hold on a moment. Your way's better. It all starts with setting a budget and setting those numbers, supporting it, making sure it's realistic, and then chasing it down. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, at the end of that, after you take the dust settles, you've done it all, and you look at what actually happened, that's a budget to actual. And so you looked at what you budgeted, you looked at what actually happened, and if it's relatively close, you go do it again. Mm -hmm. There's this whole notion, This there's a, in the, we live in a world right now where People are fighting and trying to be accepted for who they are, which I don't agree with. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm you sorry. should be chasing I'm numbers so sorry. And, be, and behaving. I'm sure that wasn't meant to be funny, but I just had to take it. Like, be behaving in an extra, a extraordinary manner, an extraordinary manner to chase these numbers down that you've set for yourself. You, Jack. I appreciate you for who you are right now today. I don't know. Do you? All of this. <laughs> right here. This, all of this. If this is the best it's going to get. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. This is one of those times it's like, I'm a little afraid of Jill. <laughs> And you can say the same about me. If this is the best, this is going to get. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, there's this concept now because I think it's partly because of the internet. I'm sure largely because of the internet that you should do stuff if you enjoy it. Oh, that's the funniest thing. That cracks that's me true. Up. That concept. Yeah, and if me you up. don't enjoy it, just follow Prince Harry. You should leave. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not the leaving thing when he was talking, everyone, I'm talking about the article, the whole interview about where he's like, your mental health, your mental health is more important than your paycheck. I'm not sure I agree with that. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you, Joe. I think food on the table is more important first. I'm not, I'm not advocating doing something you hate. Correct. Not by any stretch. Exactly. But I, Don't, but nothing bad, bad. There's good and bad parts to everything. Yes. And if you follow the numbers that you set for yourself, however high or low they are, uh, you're you're going to outsource all the stuff you don't like to do anyway because right. you have the money. Right. So it does begin and end with numbers. Somebody in Discord, it was Lori, is in Florida right now and they're launching satellites. SpaceX is launching satellites and she had a whole kind of like a, a little bit of an emotional moment and said, Elon Musk is just a guy. Yeah. He's just a regular guy. Yeah. And he's chosen to launch stuff into space. Yeah. So all we're trying to do is make uh, 10 or $20 million a year buying and selling land. Right. So compared to the space thing, SpaceX, it's not. This is really it's, safe. It's tiny. Talk about playing. Yeah, it's safe. Exactly, Joe. Yeah, I'm going to quietly make a couple million bucks a year. Right. I'm not launching anything. <laughs> <laughs> if you need access to any sort of ownership or property details, including owner phone numbers and FEMA flood map overlays, please check out parcelfact.com or neighborscoop.com created by investors, that's us, for investors like you. Happy to join us today. Five days a week, you can find us here on the Land Academy Show. Tomorrow's Jill Friday, and she's going to talk about female land uh, investors unite. That's right. Say that again three times fast. Female land investors unite. There we go. That's you are right. not alone in your real estate ambition. That's good to be I have good. some stuff to talk to say about this, this women's group, too. Oh, okay. I would like to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not. You know what? Maybe instead of the happiest and the unhappiest state, we can talk about the happiest and the unhappiest home. <laughs> <laughs> Depending how you what you have to say tomorrow. Because <laughs> right now it's the happiest. That could change. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We hope you find our content valuable and we really do appreciate your support. If you haven't already, check out our YouTube or any other place that we're around. Hit the subscribe button, follow us, leave us notes. We love it. We, we are Stephen Jill. Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We hope you find our content valuable and we appreciate your support. If you have not already, please check out our channel and hit the subscribe button. And your comments and suggestions help us uh, to create the content you're here for. Hitting the like button helps to support our channel's algorithm and gauge your interest for future shows. 